MacArthur Day was a memorable one in the history of Milwaukee and of Marquette University. Douglas MacArthur, General of the Army, was returning to his own home city, and the city in the state of Wisconsin had gone all out to prepare a warm, heart-stirring welcome, and Marquette University, aided by friendly cooperation from civic and state officials and other Milwaukeeans, was happy to add her part to this public acclaim. More than a month before, Marquette officials had invited General MacArthur to receive an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. And now, this morning of the awaited day, representatives of national press, radio, television, motion pictures, and newsreels were completing their setup for nationwide coverage of the event. General MacArthur had won many victories on the battlefield, had skillfully brought organization, freedom, and hope to the people of Japan. He had, in his own words, simply done his duty as God, gave him the right to see that duty, the vanguard of some 22,000 guests arrived before noon and lunched in the stands. The working press cheerfully took time out to enjoy the box lunches given by the university, who had covered every detail in their thoughtful preparation for complete national coverage of a truly significant event here on the grounds of Marquette University Stadium. The box lunches saved the working press valuable time in the highly geared tempo of establishing facilities, and this was important for the impressions gathered here would reach across the country into Chicago, Washington, Philadelphia, New York, and elsewhere. Douglas MacArthur was to be welcomed by the university's board of governors, academic council of deans, administrative officials, faculty, and associated friends. Cheered by 22,000 Marquette students and alumni, he was to be eulogized by the president of Marquette University, Father O'Donnell, whose address rebroadcast that night over two nationwide radio networks, one widespread praise as an outstanding tribute to a great American, General MacArthur, who had shown his esteem for the basic principles of religion and morality, the indispensable foundation of our national greatness. Now, at 2.30 p.m., the flashing red headlights alert the crowd. The motorcade is just about to enter the south gate of Marquette. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem, as played by the Marquette University Band, sung by the audience, and led by Mr. Bruce Foote. Ladies and gentlemen, the President 
of Marquette University, the very Reverend Edward J. O'Donnell of the Society of Jesus. Father O'Donnell. General of the Army, Douglas MacArthur. Mrs. MacArthur, their son, Arthur. Distinguished guests, members of the university family, alumni and friends of Marquette, ladies and gentlemen. On September the 2nd, 1945, Aboard the battleship Missouri in Tokyo Bay, General of the Army Douglas MacArthur put into words the message which our own minds were slowly discovering in the unfolding pattern of world events. On that momentous occasion, General MacArthur said, we have had our last chance. If we do not now devise some greater and more equitable system than the destructiveness of war, Armageddon will be at our door. The problem is basically theological and involves a spiritual recrudescence and improvement of character that will synchronize with our almost matchless advances in science, art, literature, and all the material and cultural developments of the past 2,000 years. It must be of the spirit if we are to save the flesh. Today, in the presence of the distinguished soldier who spoke these words, we shall do well to remember that these were not casual remarks uttered in the hour of triumph, nor bloodless concepts fashioned by human reason alone. They are the ideas that built our civilization, whose preservation now devolves upon us as our historic destiny and in whose achievement we shall save ourselves. They are the ideas that undergird the shaken structure of Christian civilization that we must now strive resolutely to shore up. They are the very ideas that our enemies seek to destroy and that we must therefore all the more positively and effectively affirm. Into our lives today steps the man who sets going within the nation's very soul a courageous inner flame almost a decade ago when our country's honor was in danger of disgrace, and the lamps of civilization seem to be going out, he comes to us, the academic community, at another critical moment in our nation's history, at a moment when under severe challenge from without, American culture is being forced to state more explicitly and to defend more perseveringly its own principles and aims. In this lengthening hour of crisis, our intelligence and our faith are being tested, tested more forcibly than our power. And if our intelligence and our faith fail us, we know that our power will lead only to destructive ends. 
We owe it, therefore, to ourselves, to our country, to the young men, some of whom will have to die, to make sure that they understand and that we understand what it is we are fighting and what it is we are trying to save. General MacArthur, it is a thrilling and heartening experience to welcome you to Marquette University today. Your gracious favor in coming to us stirs us to an even greater affection for you. Like the long-awaited return of an absent friend whose memory we have kept alive through all the intervening years. We shall never be able to tell you how much we are indebted to you for reminding us by your words and by your deeds that our way of life and the continuation of our free society are bound up in the end with the recognition of the dignity of man as a person and the acknowledgement of God as the first expression and ultimate source of our freedom. We have found in your words a warning and an inspiration. We have admired your singleness of purpose and your great reserve of spiritual strength. We have looked on at your achievements and we have told ourselves that the work that you have done will abide long after this generation is forgotten and will be spread by others, fired with the same unutterable craving to do the work of justice which our priceless freedom demands. So as we welcome you, General MacArthur, we honor you too as one who gave and did not count the cost, who toiled and did not seek for rest, who labored and did not ask for any reward, save only to know that he had worked for the glory of God, the good of his country, and the welfare of his fellow men. Very Reverend President, on behalf of the faculty and trustees of Marquette University, it is my privilege to present General Douglas MacArthur. Douglas MacArthur, General of the Army, was graduated with highest honors from the United States Military Academy in 1903. This was the beginning of more than 50 years of service as a distinguished soldier. During the First World War, he was founder and commander 
of the Rainbow Division. After a term as superintendent at West Point, he took up his long career in the Far East, interrupting it in part to carry out in Washington the duties of Chief of Staff of the United States Army. Following the gallant defense of Bataan at the outbreak of World War II, he was made supreme commander of the Allied forces in the Southwest Pacific, where he directed a brilliant campaign that led to final victory. After he received the surrender of Japan, he remained on as commander of its occupational forces. Through his understanding of the Oriental mind, he was able not merely to oppose materialistic communism, but to lead the Japanese toward an appreciation of democracy, which he emphasized could rest securely only on Christian principles. For his personal bravery and military achievement, for his moral and spiritual idealism, General Douglas MacArthur has merited the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Thank you. represent a symposium of science, art, culture, and divinity. I therefore take great pride in having my name scrolled on your tablet as an honorary alum. My deepest thanks and appreciation.
the audience will now sing God Bless America, led by Mr. Bruce Foote. God bless America, and that I love, stand beside her, and guide her through the night, with a light from above, from the mountain to the prairie. Thank <laughs> you.